this is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. I am making a tuck lace afghan on my bulky machine. And I am going to begin by e-wrap casting on over needles in a particular pattern from left 18 to right 23. I'll bring those needles out. You can see that I have four needles and then an empty a needle out of work, then three out of work, three out of work, three out of work, on across, ending with four needles on the right hand side. And in fact, when I'm in pattern, I'm going to move these stitches out. Now, then I will have three needles in work, a space, and just one on the very edge. I begin this with a hem though, and for the hem, I'm going to e wrap cast on with the needles in this particular configuration. I'm putting a close pin on the yarn and pulling up a little slack and doing my e-wrap. I try to keep the e-wrap fairly loose so the machine won't have any trouble knitting the stitches through these loops. I'm using two strands of 212 yarn. You might use a DK weight, and I am on tension 5. You need to use whatever tension gives you the gauge. And I'm going to knit 24 rows of plain stockinette for the hem. After knitting 24 rows of plain stockinette, I'm going to get the comb off and pick up the hem. I'll just fold the knitting this way and I'll catch one loop and put it on a needle. Now I know with all hems I'm going to turn out one loop short so what I will do is just leave one needle empty and that way when I get to the other end I'll have the right number of stitches and I'll feel happy about that. So I'm picking the loop that is the closest to me. It's a big loop. It's very easy to get. And this works fine for him. I usually do use waist yarn, but I thought this was a great opportunity to teach a little different hem. Now that my hem's picked up, I'm going to start from zero again on my counting of rows. So put the row counter on zero, zero, zero. For best results when doing tuck stitch, having some weights on the work is the way to go. So I'm putting weights across my work. I actually have four of these little claw weights. And I'm also going to rearrange two needles in my work. On the left hand inch edge, I'm moving this end stitch, and it's actually a needle with two stitches, out to the end needle. And on the right hand end, I'm going to do the same thing, moving the last bit of knitting onto the next needle. That second to last needle is back in A position out of work. Now I need to program this Brother 270 machine. This is an easy pattern to hand pick if you have a non patterning machine, but I'm taking advantage of the patterning in this machine to do the tuck lace. So, I need to first make sure it puts lace all across. So that is this top light up here. If that's not lit, I need to punch it. Also, all the variation lights need to be off. So I check that quickly. Then I press step and light up the pattern number light. Now, this is pattern 1, 2, 5. If it's got another pattern in it, then you just press clear entry, CE, and put in 1, 2, 5 and then press step. And then it indicates the position. Now this is eight stitches wide and it positions from needle number left four over to needle number right four. So that indicates the left four. And then I press step again and the ready light comes on. That's all there is to it. First I'm going to close the hem. So I'm just going to knit a row. I'm not even selecting needles. Then I'm going to go outside the turn mark and I'm going to turn the KC dial and it's going to be on KC to select needles. So I just bring it over on my left, which is off camera, beyond the turn mark, and then I go across. I still haven't pushed in the tuck buttons 
and I go ahead and do that next row. It just knits, but it selects my needles. So now I have some needles in upper working position. In fact, the only needles that will tuck are the ones that are in B position. So these are the ones that will tuck. With needles selected, I push in my two tuck buttons. I'm going to knit all the way to row counter number 519. I keep an eye on the row counter, and every 100 rows or so, I'll go ahead and raise my weights. If the weights go all the way down and hit the ground, they're no good. They don't exert any downward pressure on the knitting at that point, so you have to keep bringing them up. Wow, that was 519 rows. I sat a while, I stood up a while. I hope there's some aerobic value to the exercise. Now what I need to do is take the end stitches on the right and the left off on a piece of yarn. So I'll bring the stitch behind the hook, bring the needle out all the way, knit it onto the piece of yarn, take the yarn off, and I'll just pull this yarn so that it's sticking out of that stitch like that. And I'm going to do that on the uh, left side of the work as well. Needle out, knit through, drop it off the needle, and pull that yarn so that it's on the needle that way. Now I still want to bring out one more needle on each side, but close to the work, so I'm doing that. I'm also canceling patterning. If you just turn your KC dial around to the end position, the tuck buttons will pop back out and it'll go to normal knitting. Now just to help me keep track of my rows, because I'm going to do a 24 row hem, no big surprise there, same as the bottom, I'm putting my row counter on 0, 0, 0. So this was a particular list of things that you had to do. Let me check my notes and run through them again. Drop the end needle onto yarn, put that needle out of work, bring out the extra needle one closer to the work than that one was, turn off patterning, row counter to 0, 0, 0. We need a marker row, and then we're going to knit 23 more pla rows plain, so that all together we have 24 rows for the hem. Then we're going to be able to bring the two layers together to make the hem at the top of the work. So I need something very thin for my marker row. I have some super thin sky blue yarn. It'll be a good contrast to this maroon yarn. And I'm going to put it in the main feeder with the two strands of maroon yarn, so they're all in there together and hand feed it for the first plain row. I, I broke the blue yarn and fished it out of the feeder. Now let me get those 23 more rows done so I can pick up this hem. I reached down and took all my weights off of the work. I'm going to bring the work in between my two beds. I've got a ribber with a ribber cover on the machine. Just for fun, let me flip this over and show you the bottom edge of the work. There's the hem and this very pretty tuck lace. It needs a little vertical tug, but it really is a pretty thing. And that's uh, also a pretty yarn. My yarn's a little bit heathery. This took, for these three narrow panels, it took less than two cones of yarn. I've got a fair amount of yarn left, certainly enough for maybe a short sleeve top. Now what I need to do is pick up my hem and I'm just going to get the marker row and put it on the needles. And as usual, I'm going to come up one stitch short. It's pretty easy to see the marker row stitches to pick up. They're the ones that go this way. Don't pick up the ones that go this way. You want to get the same row all across. So get the light blue that's mixed in with the burgundy that goes this way. And pretty easy to see, and I'll have that picked up in a jiffy. Now all you have to do is cast these off together, but not too tightly. And I'm going to do it in my own lazy way. I'm putting all the needles out in hold. I'm also bringing out my out of work needles that have been out of work for the entire afghan panel. I'm turning my machine to the loosest possible tension, and I'm pulling a little extra yarn out of the take-up springs. 
moving that slow row across, I even stop in the middle and pull more yarn loose. I'm going to leave enough yarn for a tail to sew a very short area in assembly. This is mostly latched together, but I do sew the hems. And then everybody back out and hold. And I'm just going to latch off. That finishes the top of my afghan panel. This is the latch off cast on I use so very frequently. I just put a loop in my latch tool and pull the next loop through. I can almost do this by feel. My friends tease me and say it's the only cast off I know, but honestly, I know another cast off or two, and I use them when I think I should. When I get to the far right side, I simply pull the loose end through that last loop. Notice on the empty needles, I'm just taking the loop off them and pulling it through like any other loop. I will have to rearrange needles before I knit the next panel. I'll have to get back in my normal needle setup. I put a tool inside this top hem. I'm giving it a little tug to set the stitches. See what a nice hem that makes? Do you see that blue thread peeking out? Now I'm going to have to pick that blue thread out. I can pull on it and my blue thread is not sturdy enough. It'll break. So I'll do my best to get some of it out by pulling, but by and large I'll have to pick it out. I'm about to begin the two wide panels which are the lighter color. My lighter color is two ends of 212 in a rose. So my dark panels were burgundy, my light panels were the rose. My needle arrangement is a little different than before. I want these wider, so I have started with needle number 30 on the left and I've gone over to needle number 27 on the right. Four in work, then three, then three, then three, then three, then three, all the way to the end, and then four in work on the right hand end. Other than that, the panel is made in exactly the same way in every respect. From the E-wrap cast on, to the 20 row, 24 row hem, to the thread lace design, to the upper hem, everything else is made in the same way. To put the panels together, I discovered that using a latch hook rug tool worked better than the latch tool I have with my machine. It's just a bigger latch tool and it holds the loops better because this is a three loop over three loop join. Now what you do is you take these two panels and make sure that you have the same ends together. Now I don't. I've got a bound off end on this one and a cast on end on this one. So let me switch that around. Here I have a bound off end. It just looks a little differently than the cast on end. And then, of course, I wouldn't have gotten very far because I wouldn't have this bit of yarn to pull out to find my first stitch. So I'm just going to yank the yarn out on that side and yank the yarn out on this side. You don't want to unravel these ahead of time. I know it seems like it would save you time, but you'll have problems with it if you unravel them ahead. And what you're going to do is pick up three stitches by unraveling three stitches. This is actually six rows along the side of that afghan. And not the easiest thing to see in the burgundy, but let's get a look at it in the pink. It's just a matter of getting. You just want to poke the tool in one stitch from the edge and give it a tug and the stitches unravel and go right in the hook. And then you need the three dark stitches behind the latch, the three light stitches in front of the latch and you pull one through the other. Then you go to the opposite side and you pick up one, two, three unraveled stitches, make sure they're in the latch and pull them through. 
Then go over to the light side and get one, two, three stitches. Make sure they're in the latch and pull them through. And you proceed on down. This part will be sewed later. For the side of the afghan, I improved the looks a little bit by mattress stitching the opening of the hem. So that has been done. And now I'm just going to finish this side with the latch tool. So I'll go ahead and pull that piece of yarn out, get my tool, and I'm just going to grab two loops this time. One, two, and then you push those behind the latch and get two more. One, two. These two are inside the latch and I pull two through two and I'll just work my way down. You know every time you pull two through two you are dealing with four rows and that makes a good edge on it. Just it looks nice. And what we have here is an oversized, very warm afghan. And it's beautiful and quite fast to make, actually, if you have the patterning device. But this one's also quite possible to make by hand-picking the tuck stitch. Here's the edge of the blanket with my seam coming down. Isn't that a beautiful finish? And then it's just sewed along here all the way around to the back. There is plenty of room inside that hem to hide the end of the yarn, and you're all set. This is only a few stitches, really, so it's not that much work to do this much of a hem front and back in between each of the panels. Here is the finished afghan. And just for scale, I put it on a daybed that is a twin-sized mattress. So it is quite long, quite wide, and has a nice warmth. Let's get a close-up. Because I mattress stitched the hem area, that is a beautiful tidy edge. I wouldn't have such a great edge if I had done fringe or something. And then look what a nice looking seam the latching made. And now I flipped it over so you can see the purl side of the stitch. The stitch is pretty on both sides and if you do a nice job on that mattress stitch and a nice job on the hem, it's a completely reversible afghan.